six degrees. The year was 1938. Austria was under German occupation, and Jews were desperately trying to flee the country. Most nations were closing their doors to Jewish refugees, but some ended up making their way to China, thanks to the bravery of a Chinese diplomat in Vienna. Dr. Ho Feng Shan defied his own government to issue visas to thousands of Austrian Jews, who then took refuge in Shanghai. He has become known as the Chinese Schindler. His story has now been turned into a play by Ottawa playwright Cam Fung. It is called Ho Feng Shan, Righteous Among the Nations. It will be performed at the Emmanuel Alliance Church of Ottawa tonight and tomorrow night. Cam Fung joins me now, along with one of the actors in the play, Alvina Usher. Good morning to you both. Good, Good morning, morning, Robin. Welcome. Yeah. Cam, you uh, stumbled on Dr. Ho's story, I think it was about a decade ago, and you started digging into That's right. it. That's right. How did you discover it in the first place? So I was uh, working on the other drama play, and I started to note that, uh, wow, this fellow is amazing. But back then, uh, there wasn't uh, too much information about him on the internet. But over the years, those information grow, grew and grew, and uh, as uh, recent as the last couple of years, there was so much material on the internet, and I also found his uh, biography book, and there's a lot of information relevant to my drama play that I can get out from this book. Dr. It, Ho was a diplomat at the Chinese consulate in uh, Vienna in the, correct. in the late uh, 30s. Why did he decide to help Jewish refugees when so many other countries were refusing to? Now, this is exactly my interest in finding out, right? I want to know exactly what's the driving force behind this person. Why is he risking his career, risking his life? And what was the motive behind? So the more I dig into, the more I find out, especially in the first few chapters of his biography book, and I found out the answer. And I really want to put all these answers into my drama play to let the world know what these motives are. First of all, it's the Confucianism that he deeply rooted in, mm -hmm. and also his religious conviction as a Christian, and also when he joined the Revolutionary Party back in the 1920s, the principle of those parties, and also his own characters and personality. It really all these five things is the mixtures, is the driving force behind him. Elvina, at some point, um, Cam reached out to the Jewish community about putting on this play. That was the first time I think that you had heard of Dr. Ho. What captivated you about his story? His humanity and what he did uh, um, for Jews at the time that everybody turned their backs on. And he, uh, you know, it was against his own government when his own government told him not to do that. There were night and days sitting and issuing visas, just those three, four, five people in the, in the embassy until they received uh, uh, the uh, uh, message from authorities, from foreign affairs of China. They were trying to push as many visas as possible. The, right. It was, you know, he risked his own career and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, because uh, at that time, Chinese received a lot of help from Germans uh, to help with uh, Japanese uh, intervention. So. You know, yeah. Dr. Ho really was, you know, it, uh, it's amazing. Um, about 2,000 visas for 2,000 families of Jews and now multiply by 60 years. We have, what, uh, 40,000 people? And you can see then why he's called the Chinese Schindler. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, you play uh, a Russian Jew who is already living in China when the Jewish refugees start arriving. What did you learn about what life was like for those refugees when they came to Shanghai? You asking me this question, and I have goosebumps because you know Sunday I have I had first time see a whole entire play because it was divided into two parts, and it was really uh, this the second part I thought you know showing the hardship in Shanghai, but I didn't realize what a great performance everybody did when they were in Vienna and with Gestapo uh, scenes and everything. So practically. Um, the life in Shanghai when people came from a house as business owners in, in mink coats and beautiful clothes and everything, all of a sudden Russian landlady bringing them to this uh, building of first floor for the business, second floor for the uh, apartment, and it's rats there, cockroaches. They have to go to the bathroom in outhouse. They cannot drink water from the top because they have to. And 
these people are like a business people that sold their businesses or were pushed out of the country by Nazis and thanks God they're alive and how they integrate with Chinese community in ghetto at this time because Japanese pushed Chinese community and Jewish community into ghetto and it's just it's just an amazing story. It's remarkable when you think about it. I mean, in one sense, they would be so grateful to be mm -hmm. uh, escaping, yet, boy, did their life change. So they they consider themselves very lucky, right? Even though they ended up in the, with the poorest Chinese in Shanghai. However, because of humanity, they help each other, they support each other, edify each other, con you know, constructive to each other, supporting each other. So. They were able to live happily through those five years when they were under Japanese occupation. Mm. So at the end of that, a lot of the Jewish people, they left Shanghai, they went to other parts of the world, they prosper. A lot of them went back there, right? In recent years, they went back there and uh, they, they took the families in there and uh, the remnants right, back in those days. And it's an amazing story. I have I read so many books that are written by the Jewish refugees. I was amazed like that back in those days, even though it's a harsh condition, they they live happily. Hmm. And Alvina, this is where my drama play is about, right? Yeah. It's not about material possession. It's about humanity. And, and what was it like? Alvina touched on the fact that she had goosebumps when she when she saw everything come together. Hey, what yeah. was it like for you, Cam, um, to to see your communities come together to work on this project? Oh, it's amazing. I, the last year when this idea started, right, so I went to visit the, uh, the Jewish community. I got great support. They're very positive. I went to the Chinese community. I got the same, same reaction. They were all say, Cam, if you need help, come to us, which I did. I went to the Jewish community center. I went to the library. I received so much support, so much resources there. And I even I went to a Berlin, the, the Jewish uh, library there. I got favorable support, right? They, wow. they got information for me. This is amazing, amazing. You have done a lot of work. I mean, if you were sitting in front of, I'm not even sure, where, where is uh, Dr. Ho, Ho, where is he buried? Well, he was buried in, uh, in China, but he passed away in, uh, in uh, 1997 when he was about 96 years old. But a few years later, he received the, uh, the Yet Vashen's uh, title of Righteous of the Na Among the Nations. And then a few years later, uh, his son and his daughter like bring him uh, back to China and, and rebury in China where he was born. So if you were sitting in front of his gravestone, what do you think that you would be reflecting on? I would say, thank you, Dr. Ho. Your legacy moved everyone. And I want to use drama, play, whatever means to let people know humanity, humanity, humanity. Thank you both very much for being here. Thank you. Break a leg. <laughs> thank you for having <laughs> us. Yeah. Cam Fung is the writer and director of the play Ho Feng Shan, Righteous Among the Nations, and Alvina Usher is one of the actors in the play. It is being performed at Emmanuel Alliance Church of Ottawa tonight and tomorrow night at 7 p.m. It is sold out on both nights, but there is a waiting list, so we mm. will tweet out the details to that. You don't need to have Twitter as well to see our account. You just go onto the Twitter website and search for Ottawa okay. Morning. Thanks again. Thank, Thank you, you for having us.